guys it's a little rainy out this is the only place in my house where i could have some light so explanation for random location change you're welcome so today is actually the last video in my journey to the stage series just going to briefly go over some points that i didn't get to mention during my peak week my show day go over the results where am i going after all of this what are my future plans with competing and then also going into my recovery phase because that is actually super important a lot of people might end up thinking that like just doing the show is the end of it but actually the recovery after the show is super super important let's get started so for peak week and show day i'm sure at least in the peak week video it showed that i was just so exhausted and i didn't really realize how exhausted I was until a week after when I had eaten a lot more and I had obviously known I'd felt bad but it didn't fully hit how bad I felt until I was kind of back to normal. It was like I, I never wanted to go to the gym again. I was just so sick and over everything. I didn't want to like move. I didn't want to do anything. During my peak week video, you saw that I was getting my nails done to get glammed up for the competition. And you saw I was sitting in a massage chair the whole time, just sitting. And that exhausted me. I had to go home and lie down. Wednesday was the last day that I trained with my trainer. I did train Thursday. I had to have, I did it at home and I had to have David actually like be like, you gotta work out. But I actually ended up telling my trainer on Wednesday when I was with him, I'm really mad that I booked a training session with you because I don't want to train but I'm also happy that I booked a training session with you because I know I have to and this probably was the only way for me to actually do the training and Wednesday was the day that I ended up having to leave work early so just super super exhausted on peak week now are most peak weeks like that I want to say no granted that's the only peak week that I've done I don't think most at least nowadays are like that but yeah peak week was just I want to lay in bed I don't want to do anything else leave me alone <laughs> show day that that was another thing i was just so out of it that so many things that I look back on, I'm like, yeah, I probably should have filmed that. With my show day, I end up waking up at four o'clock in the morning, started hair and makeup at 4.30. I was in that chair for about two and a half hours. It honestly, like people were asking me like, has it, has it hit you yet? Like, are you excited? And I was like, I just, I don't really feel anything right now. <laughs> still doesn't feel real. It still doesn't feel like it's happening. And yeah, I don't think it really like registered with me until I was actually on the stage. And I'm like, oh wow, yeah, I'm actually doing this. Okay, pay attention, but it was a little too late by then. <laughs> I'm already on the stage. Yeah, doing the whole tan yourself, I know a lot of competitors do it. If I were to compete again, I think I'm gonna go with the on-site tanning company. Not that it was hard, I definitely needed another coat for the morning show, which I didn't put on until the night show because everyone had gone to get the donuts for me and I didn't feel like doing it myself. I definitely was a little too light. My face was way too light to begin with, but then when I added that last coat before going to finals, you could really tell the difference. So just every morning, every night, having to apply it, having to get someone to apply it, no one wanted to do it. Everyone was like, no, you do it, no, you do it. I was just like, can someone help me? please. So yeah, I think it would just be easier <laughs> instead of making it like a three, four day ordeal because I'm so pale. But so we went down to the meeting. It was organized, but maybe just because I was an event coordinator, <laughs> it wasn't to like my level of organization. And just because I'm a super, super crazy organized kind of person on top of that. But like when I went to go do the check-ins the day before, they like switched the times too, which was really weird. And the prices of the tickets. I don't know when they did it. So the day before on Friday we had the pre-show weigh-in check-in and like I walked up to the doors I obviously looked confused I was like I don't where do I go obviously into the room do you need to check something or do I need to do something out here because I had a table out front and no one was like oh okay you seem like you don't know what you're doing this is where you need to go so I actually had to walk up to a guy literally standing in front of him and he's still sitting not offering to help or anything I'm like what do I do? And he's like, oh, you're a competitor, just go right and then go from there. I was like, okay, and the table to the right was like for men's bodybuilding. I didn't even see the like, where they were taking the height, which was like next to that table. So I was like, okay, I guess I find my table. One just said bikini, so I went over there and like, oh, did you get your height taken? I was like, no, they didn't tell me to get my height, just said go right. And right was the bodybuilding table. <laughs> 
So she pointed me over there. I got my height. They put me at like 5'4 and 3 quarters, 1 quarter, something like that. Went back to the table, gave me my number and the schedule of the day on when all the classes were going to go on. Then I went over to the table where they were doing the photography, where you could pay for it beforehand, which had to be in cash. Everything, I think, had to be paid in cash. Like if you hadn't originally signed up and you were signing up day of, that had to be paid with cash. And then it looked like they were giving away the drawstring bag. Then like the last table next, like if I had gone left from walking in that table, they had like competition shirt. And then that was it. I was like, oh, okay. But I guess check-ins, like on the website when I had originally checked it, said they started at six. And when I got there, I was like, yeah, we actually started at five. So that was the check-ins. And then the next day we had a pre-show meeting. When we got there, they're like, hey, if you have music, some divisions do have music with their routines. And so maybe they were waiting for all the competitors to get their music settled to the DJ before they started. But we didn't start until like 8.30 and the show started at nine. So I'm sitting there freaking out. Like I need to go upstairs to get my last layer of tan. <laughs> needs to dry. I need to put on my bathing suit. I need to make sure my backstage bag was packed, but I just wanted to do like a double check before going down. Like I have to do that, then I have to get down and like still freaking out because everyone else has their backstage bag. So I'm thinking I'm the only one who's going to be getting up and walking out. I'm like, oh my God, I just look, I, I know I'm, I'm a newbie, but I'm just really gonna look like one. And I was told like, yeah, no, it'll usually be like 15 minutes, super short. And then like, if you wanna go back up to your room, you're fine. Every competitor is coming in with their like backstage bag and I'm the only one without my bag. I'm like. Was I not? Am I not supposed to go? Am I, am I supposed to stay here? What? Geez. So I'm like <laughs> internally panicking. And the only, it was mostly like a way to say, to introduce the promoters and the people behind the stage. You know, they went over that the venue we were at was not the original venue, um, which obviously is not normal because of COVID. And because of the venue change, the backstage wasn't going to be as big as originally intended. So they're like, if you want to be backstage, sure, but heavily imply, like, please, unless you're about to go on stage, don't be backstage. There's not enough room for you. So basically, where the curtain was, you could fit like if one person standing with their arms touching the wall and the curtain. That's probably how much room was where the curtain was, and then where the curtain ended, because they had the stage and then the curtain on the backstage, and then two additional curtains on each side to cover the full backstage area. And those were those side curtains wore you could probably get like four three I'm gonna go three like three people with their arms fully extended but then you had on the left side like if you were facing the audience the left side there was a table where you could put like your bag and then they also had the on-site tanning company who because of the limited space offered to glue and oil all the competitors because there was nowhere else literally nowhere else all of these competitors could have gone backstage to do it themselves without making a mess so that was actually really nice of hotspot tanning and then the right side that's where all the competitors who were about to go on were getting lined up and would enter that meeting was predominantly to tell us that the venue had changed backstage was small introduce promoters introduce all the sponsors and then announce if you are in the it was like the first three or four classes it was like hey after this meeting just get backstage get oiled get glued get pumped you're going on first and he's like everyone else go do whatever you want to do <laughs> and then other competitors like grabbed their bag got up and left the room I'm like maybe it's normal after the meeting to go straight backstage but because of what's going on they're leaving or maybe they just always carry their bag with them just in case the meeting goes well I I don't know I didn't make any friends to ask uh, and I didn't have anyone there with me <laughs> my coach didn't come I didn't know anybody but I was like oh thank god other people are leaving I can go leave quickly do it and me I just I knew I wasn't going on first but I was like I need to <laughs> Be back here super fast. So I like went up, tanned, got everything ready, got the suit on. That's why there wasn't any clips of me, like the final getting ready until the end because I was just like, we need to be downstairs right, like right now. So I go downstairs. When my friends went down, like the ticket price went from 25 to $30 for the pre-judging. And then the finals, they were told that it was gonna be like, I think $5 more for that as well, or 10, I can't remember. And I'm like, that's not what it said online. So I don't know if that's not what I end up checking after the fact, like I'm seeing that it had been updated on the website to reflect what happened at the show. I don't know when that made that change. I was never notified of that change. Again, don't know if that's normal, but double check the week of, even the day before, 
more if you have people coming or even if you don't just for yourself so in case any times change they don't email you at least at this show they did not email the competitors or me who knows and then they did announce you are in like master's bikini open bikini true novice bikini like they didn't just say bikini they announced every division go backstage get ready so got up put my stuff on the table my coach was like all right send me like a quick video and it was like super awkward because there's so many people back there and I tried to send a little video I only did like half of the routine because people kept just walking in front of the, the camera and I sent it her and she's like you hungry and I was like nope I was like all right and then I just didn't hear from her that was a kind of a problem throughout the day too because I was up at four she knew I was getting up at four she said she had set alarms I called her like five times I didn't hear from her until after seven like after my makeup was done and I was supposed to eat right when I woke up and I asked her like what do you want me to eat she's like I'll tell you like when I wake up and so I didn't eat when I was supposed to like earlier in the day I didn't want to risk it and just say I'm just gonna eat this and <laughs> she was like yeah I'm just like a really heavy sleeper I just didn't wake up but there were a few times when I was like backstage I'm like I'm about to go on and then she just went respond so every time she's like are you hungry i just hadn't felt hunger in like a while like my metabolism i'm assuming was so messed up i just didn't feel hunger so she's like no i'm not hungry so i didn't get like i was so excited for the rice cake peanut butter she's like yeah because that's what we're going to use to pump you up never had it which was really disappointing because i was really really looking forward to that other than her telling me like yeah you do need that less cooked tan and a few other things i just didn't really hear from her but uh, I, at the time i just didn't care. I really did not care. They end up calling my number. My division was coming up. I was the first one in Division B to go on stage. So they lined us up. One guy was like, all right, there's six of you. So how we're going to do it is you'll go up, you'll do your routine, and then you'll actually come back because there was the square in the center of the stage, which is where you're supposed to stay when you're doing your individuals. And then they have two diagonal lines on either side of the stage. So he was like, once you go to the square, do your individual, you're all just going to come back to the diagonal that's closest to the side that we're currently on. And I'm just sitting there waiting and the girl that was helping on stage she really didn't seem like she wanted to be there like kind of like it was an inconvenience to her that's how she came off not saying that's how she was how she came off to me and so I'm standing there be like all right time to get ready to go on and then she kind of comes up and she's like walk to the square for me when people kind of just approach me without a little bit of an intro I'm kind of like oh you're talking to me all right let me start paying attention and instead of be like all right, so you're gonna walk to the square, kind of maybe, cause she knows, obviously this is the true novice we have never competed before. So for me, I think I would have just liked it to have been like, all right, so see the square, you're gonna walk to it, it's gonna repose, and then you're gonna come back, stand on the part of the diagonal that's closest to the curtain. Instead, it was just abruptly coming up to me and saying, walk to the square. And so, like I said, for me, it was just like, oh, okay, like, let me process what this person who just came up to me and randomly started talking to me just said. And so you've probably seen it in a few of my videos, like I kind of like relax my shoulders, I get my back arched, like that's kind of how I prep myself before I walk and that's how I've been doing it. So I was like, okay, I'm ready to go on. And I guess that pause instead of just immediately walking, she was like, walk to the square. And so I, I just started walking. There was no prep. There was no, like everything just kind of left my head because I was like, she just almost forced me onto the stage. And so I get to the square, I start posing. I feel like my individual went pretty well I don't think it was the best that I've done and it's probably from just that unfortunate start um, where I just should have been more focused and when I got to my back pose and I see it even today watching the video I held it way too long like I'm counting you're supposed to hold it for three seconds and I'm watching and I'm counting I'm like one two three turn <laughs> turn why aren't you turning i think i held it for like five seconds so it was only two extra seconds but it just it felt watching it not even being up on stage watching it it just looks like i am holding it for so much longer than just two seconds and the girl on the side did up saying like keep going and that's when i just like and you can tell like the transition to the front just was so fast because i also didn't want to be the person who held up the other girl so i just like quickly wrapped it up walked to the back of the stage, held it, and then my body just shook so much. I didn't know if it was because I was just squeezing everything or if it was from nerves. I don't know, I just couldn't stop shaking. So all the girls go on, do their routine. Five of us that are on the diagonal, the sixth girl goes on, does her routine, and then the girl says, you can, you know, don't come back to that diagonal, just walk to the other end of the stage. And then us on the diagonal, 
followed her, we all lined up, and went straight into comparisons. And comparisons, I, being on stage, I knew I messed it up. Watching the video, I've confirmed the fact that I've messed it up. The transitions for me were probably the worst part. Watching it, and I knew I missteps. Actually seeing what I did on the video, which is like, oh god, it's bad. Oh, it's so bad. And I think it's just having the girls next to me and them transitioning differently threw me off. But then even standing in my normal pose, I was like, you're not arching your back. You look like a log, just straight look like you have no curves. What are you doing? I don't know if it was a combination of just, I was over it. I was thrown off. I didn't care. I just wanted to be up this day. I don't know. But comparisons, I do not watch that video. So it literally lasted maybe 30 seconds in total, the 10 seconds it took me to do mine, and then maybe 20 seconds in the comparisons round. But yeah, really fast. And then we were off the stage and no one was really there to be like, all right, so if you are doing any more divisions, we'll call you back. You're done. You can leave. No one there to tell you what happened after you got off stage. And they didn't say anything to me. So I'm like, I'm just going to leave. I don't even care if I'm not supposed to. I'm going to leave. And then other than that, the only thing I don't think I covered in the show day video was finals. They were so much longer. Pre-judging, it took an hour for me to go on. Finals, it took maybe an hour and a half, two hours for me to be able to go on. For the bikini division, at the very least the true novice division, what they had us do, and they didn't, they did not tell you what you had to do for finals either. So they lined you back up, went back in line, was again the first one to go on, so I'm standing on the stairs, and she's like, all right, go to the square. I'm like, am I supposed to do my routine? Am I just supposed to walk and be like, hi, and then walk to the, what do I do? Did I miss something where they said this? Or are we just assuming I'm supposed to know everything? I winged it. I literally went up there, thought I was going to make a complete fool of myself, did my routine, and walked to the end. Had no idea if that's what I was supposed to do. I was like, I don't even care if I make a fool out of myself. This is what I'm doing, because you didn't tell me anything. Apparently I was right. Felt like people were still judging me though. And then they immediately announced the top three. But finals, I was, I was just at such a point where I just did not care. It's like 7.30 at this point. Finals started at six. I'm like, if I'm not up there in the next couple of minutes, I'm not even gonna go on stage for finals because I have a dinner reservation at eight. And all I care about is eating the food I wanna eat. I don't even care about the sport anymore. That is just how bad of a mood I was in that I didn't even care about going back up for finals. They re me, re-oiled me. Um, again, when I got off the stage, they did not tell you if you were supposed to stay for something. And I left and I went to go get dinner. Uh, they did post all of the results. So out of the six girls, I came in four. It took about four days, four or five days for me to fully feel like myself again. Seeing that I got in fourth place and being in a more sound mind, I did decide that I do want to compete again. What's next for me? Where am I going after all of this? I have decided that in 2021, I'm going to be going through my first bulk. I have never bulked before. So I will be going into a bulk in 2021. The rest of this year basically is just for recovery. I was in a deficit for so long that was not broken my body needs to recover for a very long time because of it so even though like i feel normal my body is still recovering and it's i'm letting it recover in 2021 we're going into a bulk i'll probably do a slight cut after that bulk to get rid of any fat that i may have gained from the bulk and then after that cut again staying at a maintenance, letting my body recover. And during that time when I'm back in maintenance is when I will start looking for a prep coach. I am looking to join a team because I did not like the feeling of being by myself at that show whatsoever. Obviously I had my boyfriend, I had family, I had friends, but they were not competitors. They had no idea what was going on. They could not be there with me backstage. And I feel like if I had had someone there with me, just a group of people, I probably would have enjoyed the show day a lot more as well and I do really want to be a part of like a family. Those are my plans so I will not be competing again until 2022 the recovery phase. What am I doing right now to recover. I'm gonna be honest, recovery has been the hardest part for me so far because I don't have that restriction of, oh, if you cheat, you're not gonna look very good on stage. If I wanna eat something, there isn't really any repercussion to it. So just kind of trying to get control over my diet again has, once you've opened the floodgates, it's very hard to close them type of thing. The original plan was to reverse diet and I'm still in my reverse diet. I'm in it for, as of right now, as of filming, um, I have two more 
weeks until I'm back up to my maintenance level, totaling about five or six weeks. Now, however you choose to reverse diet is completely up to you. This is not the first reverse diet I have done. I did one last year when I first started this whole journey. A reverse diet is just when you slowly add back calories every five to seven days so you don't just jump from a dieted weight to your maintenance weight because that could be anywhere between a two to 500 calorie increase in a very short amount of time and could result in you gaining some unnecessary weight that you've spent so much time trying to get rid of. So some people choose to do a reverse diet to slowly add back those calories to reduce the amount of weight gain. And how I've been adding back those calories, those calories have been coming from my carbs. So as of right now, I think the first three weeks I've been adding my carbs and now I will still be adding back in my carbs, but now I will slowly start lowering my protein because I won't be needing as much to sustain my muscles. Um, but yeah, now I'm altering my protein and my fat a little bit to be where I want to see it during my maintenance. But those first three weeks, uh, all of those calories were coming from carbs because I was completely depleted from carbs. So I wanted to slowly add that back in until my body could handle a higher carb diet and then once I could start bumping the carbs up more and more and more I could lower the protein so even more calories could end up going to carbs so that has how I've been doing my reverse diet as of my last weigh-in I was only 11 pounds up from my stage weight so stage weight I was about 122 I think I just weighed in at 125 the weight gain hasn't worried me because I know I've been doing a bit of binging it, it sucks to see the weight gain but I'm not mad about it because I know why it happened but then I also went into it knowing I was going to gain weight so it doesn't upset me because I was well aware of it I'm more upset of the binges I have been good it only lasted for the two and a half weeks it's just very important to have a plan in place which I did have but it was just not expecting these cravings and to pop up. I wasn't really expecting that because I am very good with controlling what I eat as I demonstrated in the past year. But yeah, definitely have a plan in place. Be very careful, expect the weight gain. It's gonna happen. A lot of people recommend that if you are going to continue to compete, aim for maybe 10 pounds above stage weight, but there are pros that when they are in their off season, they're like 20, 30 pounds over stage weight. So don't let the scale completely control you just be aware be careful and be kind to your body so that is what my recovery is looking like right now the first week back to the gym I still went to the gym but I was there for maybe 30 minutes was not lifting heavy was I was still lifting but not heavy did some walking for cardio nowhere near as much as I was doing before and then come the second week I was back to lifting heavy things that's where I am right now those are my goals those were my thoughts. Thank you guys so much for being on this journey with me. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you next week, bye.